I was going to start with a confession that I'm moving up on the timeline and we're actually going to be in the 1950s for the next 15 minutes and then I'm going to go into the 21st century. So it brings us up into the here and the now. All the time, of course, thinking about 1853. So the title of my talk, Great Exhibitions in Ireland and Their Influence on Irish Craft and Design, really could be renamed to Great Expectations of Exhibitions because expectations were often elevated as to what these public displays could actually achieve. In 1853, the Art Journal of London, which produced the illustrated catalogue of the 1853 exhibition, frankly concluded that Irish manufacturers meant only the production of the loom and that by hand labour. The journal editor wrote that the purpose of the 1853 exhibition was to promote industrial manufacturing in Ireland to arise advantageous, immensely beneficial to the country. So this great expectation was that the 1853 exhibition would, in their words, render Ireland a manufacturing country. This linking of a country's development with industry, in contrast to the handmade, is a strand of thinking that persisted into the mid 20th century in another exhibition, great or otherwise, of Irish design in 1956, which is the focus of my talk. My talk will also explore, as I said, key contemporary Irish design exhibitions that reveal a shift in emphasis from manufactured to made. So, to begin, the Irish Design Exhibition of 1956, which you see here an image of, one of the rare images that exist, uh, it was convened by the newly established Arts Council of Ireland. It featured a plough above which hung some farming forks. And if you can see the plough on the bottom left hand side of the photograph and above which we have the farming forks. The organisation of this exhibition demonstrated that notions of improving taste and generating design awareness among the Irish were 19th century legacy features that endure through to the 20th century. The need to foster value in Irish manufactured goods and the focus on the potential economic benefits shows a continuity of purpose from the Industrial Exhibition of 1853 to over 100 years later, this exhibition of Irish design in 1956. Writing about the display of ploughs in the 1853 exhibition, John Sproul wrote that the swing ploughs were in almost universal use in this country. Although of those in the exhibition, there were few which call for any special remarks. And I just included a, an illustration of the wheel plough uh, from his uh, illustrated catalogue. So the plough in 1956 appears again. Uh, and of course the plough operates on a symbolic level as an object reflecting the value placed on agriculture for a nation. So the 1956 exhibition was designed to be educational. It travelled to several cities around Ireland, enabling this highly commended two-furrow mounted agricultural plough, designed and made by Wexford Engineering, and a tweed donkey figurine handmade by a woman called Eleanor Brickendale of Country Markets that also featured to travel as representations of good Irish design. Investigating the selection of objects on display attempts to shed light on how the Irish government wanted to display products that were of solely Irish manufacture to promote design for industry, yet the reality was the inclusion of handcrafted items and the involvement of Irish hands in the skilled making of things. A review of the exhibition in the evening press singles out our plough, describing in detail the selection of farming forks that hung over it in artistic terms. The author of the review, Mary Reed, further attempts to elevate the machine objects in the exhibition by describing another piece of machinery on display as being like a poem in turquoise and silver. So she refers to the uh, farming forks as being like futuristic mobiles. So the 1950s was a period that saw an attempt by the Arts Council of, of Ireland, established in 1951, to promote the need for good design. The commercial value of design and industry was not fully appreciated and the Arts Council proposed to remedy this shortcoming. So they set about holding two exhibitions, great or otherwise, to generate design awareness among the Irish. They hired the London-based design consultancy, the Design Research Unit, the DRU, under the direction of the well-known designers Misha Black and Milner Glazer. The DRU were, interestingly, they were given freedom to design these two exhibitions for Ireland. So firstly, the International 
design exhibition of 1954. And you can see the really bright, vibrant red catalogue cover. And then shortly afterwards, the Irish design exhibition of 1956. Now, the catalogue state that the exhibitions were designed by the Design Research Unit of Ireland. And indeed, the DRU did open an Irish office by 1956. But archival evidence indicates that decisions were made in London, as Misha Black acted as a consultant on both exhibitions. So the 1950s are often characterised as, as gloomy with references to immigration and unemployment. Yet this exhibition is evidence that there was interest in an international outlook. Herbert Reed, the well-known English art historian, wrote the catalogue essay where he suggested what Ireland had to do. Writing that Ireland had lost its great tradition, it had to be recovered, he said. But he pondered that the tradition of a new Ireland, independent in its spiritual and economic aspirations, will illustrate principles that are neither contemporary nor Irish, but universal and external, because they are the principles of beauty and harmony. So objects for this first international exhibition came mainly from Britain, including a dining table and chairs designed by the quite famous designer Robin Day at the time, and also works from Denmark and Sweden. Now, according to the chairman of the Arts Council, uh, Patrick Little, the purpose of this initial international design exhibition was to, in his own words, raise the standards of good taste and artistic judgment at home, a contribution, if you like, to the dignity and happiness of family life. So it took on the moral tone that good design not only meant democracy and having a choice of quality goods, but was linked to happiness and dignity. This mid 20th century reference to the design of objects as linked to happiness and dignity echo the sentiments of 100 years earlier in the 1852 Cork National Exhibition. When, uh, as Elizabeth has uh, spoke about in her talk, the Cork Mayor, John Maguire, described the purpose in 1852 of that exhibition of Irish products as being to promote happiness and elevate the moral and physical conditions of the mass of people by the encouragement of native industry. So this connecting of design with dignity and happiness is, I also agree, a, a legacy of 19th century ex uh, exhibition making that resonates to the present day. So planning for the Irish Design Exhibition started immediately after the International Design Exhibition closed and it opened in Dublin's Mansion House in March 1956. And this is the catalogue cover designed by the Irish artist, painter and designer Thurlow Connolly. You see him here on the slide. Connolly had been invited by Herbert Reed to set up the Design Research Unit of Ireland with support from the Arts Council. And essentially, he was the man on the ground uh, for London, and he was in Dublin, and he was uh, had played a big role, not just as a designer of the catalogue, but in organizing, organizing the exhibition and had work within the exhibition as well. So in the Irish Design Exhibition of 1956, objects, there was only a small number of Irish industrial products of a high design standard that were judged could be included. A letter in the archive from Dorothy Gosslett, and she was the manager in London of the DRU, reveals the DRU's view in London that Ireland, she says, is frankly not ready to stage a full-scale exhibition of its own products in comparison with the ones shown from other countries last year. In the final selection, some 236 exhibits from over 100 firms were chosen after an initial meagre response to the first call out. And the word meagre is the words, word from the Arts Council themselves. So this led to the addition of handcraft related products, typical of Ireland as a predominantly rural economy. The Irish Council secured the Swedish designer A.K. Hult, who was director of the Swedish Council of Industrial Design to make the selections. The council's chairman wrote that in those firms who exhibited, we must recognise the national service their example will afford to those who come to this exhibition. He is drawing a parallel between patriotism and design, attributing displaying a design here with national service. And of course, this echoes the words of patriotism in the 1853 Art Journal catalogue, where Ireland was referred to at that time as a land of raw materials. And he who develops its resources, they wrote, may be indeed described not only as a patriot to his country, but as a benefactor to the world. So, in the Arts Council's archive, there is a letter written again by Dorothy Gosslett, the business manager in London of the DRU, 
which shed some light on the tension between the showcasing of industrial manufacturing and objects made by individuals by hand. She writes to the Arts Council that the DRU would rather the Arts Council use the term made and not use manufacture in the catalogue text. The reason for this, she explains, is that using the word made does also cover the one or two exhibits which are or might be under the heading of handicrafts. There was little evidence that the Arts Council was interested at this time in valuing the handmade in the 1956 exhibition of design, and it seems they desired to separate it out. So the exhibition opens, and it was opened by the Minister at the time for Industry and Commerce, Mr Norton, who, according to the Irish Times report, made an appeal to manufacturers in Ireland to pay more attention to industrial design. And you can see him there at the podium with his opening speech. The Arts Council did receive letters of complaint, and one was from Ring Ceramics Studio in Kilkenny, and I've included it in the, in the middle here. And they wrote complaining, demanding an explanation as to why their studio was not even invited to submit any work. They wrote that they felt injured at what was a deliberate exclusion. I've just included on the, on the bottom corner here, uh, two ceramic pieces by the art by the ceramic maker John French, and I include them because John French was part of Ring Ceramic Studio with Peter Brennan, and this was the type of work he was making in the 1950s, earthenware hand built. Of course, it wasn't the type of uh, work that they wanted in their exhibition of Irish design. So, what is left out can be as revealing as what is included in any exhibition, uh, particularly organised by state agencies. It can demonstrate the significance of the power of the agency, but also the role of the curator or a judge in object selections. And just one example of what is left out is the work of Gerthade Eddy, who founded Moran Textiles in County Down in 1949. Her weaving workshop combined traditional techniques and natural materials with a very modern aesthetic. She even won a silver medal for her work, which was included in an interior design by Robin Day at the Milan Triennale in 1951. And that's an image of her Milano rug in 1951 that she won the, the, the medal for. So she was, she actually, throughout the 1950s, uh, did lots of design work for people like Terence Conran and so on. So she was sort of uh, omitted from this exhibition. The craft writer Peter Dormer has defined craftspeople as those who direct the whole of their work process as well as the design of their artefacts. With craft, he said, you are buying into a way of labour, a way of life that produces objects and a visual language that is easily understood. So what the Irish government via the Arts Council at this time wanted to encourage was designers or artists who could design to design for industrial production. But this abstract uh, textile uh, designed by the artist Pat Scott, hand printed on linen, hand printed in Northern Ireland, was perhaps a gesture from this visual language of craft. It appeared in the exhibition, so if you just about make it out in the image on the right hand side, the photograph, you can see it in the corner on the right hand side. So it was a gesture, perhaps an example of how good design and craft could coexist. Now, I mentioned at the start that there were donkeys, uh, tweed donkey figurines in this exhibition of good Irish design, and they were made by Eleanor Brickendale for country markets. The donkeys featured in this image are textile donkeys, but they're made by another woman, Miss Wynne of Avoca Handweavers, and she also had three items featured in this exhibition of Irish design. She had a knee rug, a bedspread, and a shawl in wool. And although these are not the exact donkey figurines, we can imagine a similarity of form to the ones that did make the final uh, catalogue. So these tweed donkeys travelling around Ireland, they went to Limerick, Galway, Wexford, Sligo in 1956, along with the agricultural plough, which began to be called uh, that bloody plough in, in the archival letters because it was someone had a great idea to include it as good design, but of course it was very cumbersome to tour around. But these contrasting objects, if you like, in one way, in a display representing good Irish design. So while the Royal Irish Academy, uh, sorry, the Royal Dublin Society has held a national craft exhibition every year since 1968, up until very recently, the Kilkenny Design Workshop's 1984 retrospective exhibition was a particular exhibition that showcased Irish craft alongside high technological design. This is an image from the retrospective exhibition 1984 with a young Charlie McCreevy uh, invited to observe the designs. 
So founded in 1963, the KDW had been established as a centre for design excellence. It had come about as a direct response to the government concerns as to the quality of Irish design and to develop, again, economic opportunities arising from the manufacturing of goods. So in their retrospective exhibition, tech objects such as this weighing console for use on tractors was displayed in a glass case, treated as a gallery object alongside other craft items, uh, textiles, hand-built ceramics and so on. So the KDW really paved the way for exhibiting design and craft together as equal partners. When the Crafts Gallery, when the Crafts Council of Ireland, uh, which is a legacy uh, of the, the RDS as well, which came out of the RDS, when they opened their gallery in 2000 with an exhibition, Interiors, the role of craft within interiors, their exhibition program contributed further to promoting craft and design. So much so that by 2004, design historian Paul Caffrey wrote that Irish design is dominated by the crafts, with craft historian Joseph McBrin concluding in 2009 that Irish craft had reinvented themselves as a central force in postmodern, post-industrial society. So much so that by 2013, an exhibition called Vernacular by the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland, which was celebrating 50 years of the KDW, confidently displayed vernacular forms and natural materials, one-off or two commission pieces at London Design Festival in 2013. The emphasis on object selection, which included these ceramic crafts by Derek Wilson, hand-built pots by Jack Doherty, was to show the pureness of expression in the materials. This purity to the design of objects as expressed in materials were seen as markers of contemporary Irish design. Then in 2015, the central exhibition for the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland as part of their year celebrating Irish design was called Liminal, Irish Design at the Threshold. It showcased craft as a key feature of contemporary Irish design. Touring to international design weeks, it displayed craft alongside high technological products such as this plasma system for airborne infection control that you see in the top right by Dalman Industrial Design Studio based here in Dublin and Novaris. So high-tech products like this were displayed along with handmade ceramic bowls by Andrew Luddick that you see underneath and handmade rugs by Cadigan. So to conclude, recently, uh, when Ireland represented itself at Expo 2020 in Dubai, which Tristan uh, referenced last night, Ireland sent an exhibition entitled We Are the Makers, organised by the Design and Crafts Council of Ireland again, but in conjunction with the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, with input from the National Museum. The exhibition put front and centre the idea that making is a fundamental expression of identity. Here, the handcrafted item or object is displayed as a link to our ancient past, as well as a marker of innovation. The aim, according to Minister Simon Coveney, in his catalogue introduction, was to show Ireland's attractiveness as a place to live and do business. So this exhibition, featuring mainly Irish craft, was mobilised by the state to market 21st century Ireland as a place where values perceived to be inherent in craft could be utilised to serve an economic purpose. And finally, design involves the expression of values and exhibited objects communicate a message. By utilising the language of making and craft, this exhibition of Irish endeavour recently in Dubai communicated that Irish production by hand labour, that 19th century term, was now something to be proud of. Thank you. <laughs>